Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. You probably all know about the Booktube Prize, right? Um, it's a prize that um, was invented, <laughs> one could say, and is organized by Robert from Bader Hortz. Um, and if you want to know about the details, I will leave a link to his channel down below. First of all, you should subscribe and second of all, a link to a playlist where you can um, watch his announcement video and also his explanation how the price works. Very short, um, it's literary fiction published last year and there's a pool of uh, some two dozen judges. Uh, we all get uh, six books in a, in a group and then we as judges rank the books from one to six, one being the best, six being the worst in that group. So it's different from other book prizes in the sense that it's not that the judges come together and then discuss which book is best, but you have to judge it individually. And in each round, uh, from the octofinals, quarterfinals, semifinals, the first three books in each group go on to the next round. I think it's a fantastic idea to do a prize like that, first of all. And thank you, Robert, uh, for putting so much time and effort into it uh, in the organization of the prize. But I also think um, it's interesting because, like I said, it's not that... Uh, the judges have to come together and then, you know, sort of compromise uh, on the best book. But you just judge it individually. And then, uh, given the fact that there are so many judges, there will come uh, a best book come out in the end. So I thought that was interesting. Anyway, the quarterfinals have just uh, been done, end of May. Um, and so I'm now free to talk about the books that I judged in my group, Group C, and uh, to tell you how I ranked them. Um, I have a list with all the six books uh, down below, of course, um, with links to Goodreads, as always, and uh, the list is uh, in uh, author alphabetical order, so not to take away the excitement <laughs> of this video. Anyway, the six books are Kate Atkinson, Transcription, Esso Esi Edugian, Washington Black, uh, Akwekwe Emezi, Freshwater, Tayari Jones, An American Marriage, Michael Ondatje, Warlight, and Jamie Quattro, Fire Sermon. And before I tell you my ranking, one final remark about how I uh, went about it to, to rank the books. Of course, I read them all. Um, and then I asked myself, uh, did I like the book? Did I think, did I personally think it was a good book? Um, mostly liking and thinking it's a good book sort of, you know, are the same. There's one exception and I will get to it uh, when I tell you about the book. But without further ado, uh, my ranking. Coming in at number six, I'm sorry to tell you, it's Tayari Jones, An American Marriage. The book just won the Women's Prize for Fiction. I know a lot of people loved it, but I didn't think it was a very good book. Um, it's set in the present day and we follow um, mainly a couple, Celestial and Roy, a young uh, urban uh, a couple. Uh, he is an executive, she is an artist, just on the verge of breaking through. And then Roy is accused of the cri a crime that it's made very clear that he didn't commit and he is uh, convicted and sent to jail. Um, and then, of course, you know, the story develops from there, what happens while Roy is in jail, how does the couple deal with it, there's another man then getting involved, uh, you know. What I didn't like about the book and why I thought it was not a good book uh, were a couple of things. First of all, I really thought the characters were stereotypes. Uh, you know, the men were all your typical boys will be boys kind of character without making it clear to me why this individual character is like that. So it, 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 they were just stereotypes in my view. Um, the relationship between the genders, so between men and women, uh, were also extremely, uh, and again, in my view, very stereotypical. You know, women are the, the caring and the men are the macho. And if there is another man in coming into a relationship, the two men fight for the, the girl, for the woman, quite literally. 
mm, no, nah, that, that's just not my thing. Plus, the book is supposed to address um, racial injustice in the criminal justice system in the US. So the fact that Roy is sent to prison uh, because he is a black man, he is considered guilty immediately, um, that fact was completely not developed in any real depth or sense. So that was a, a big disappointment. And the last thing was that there are plot developments in the book that for me were so beyond believable that I just, I, I just couldn't, um, you know, the suspension of disbelief was just thrown out of the window. So I know even though a lot of people love the book, a lot of people thought it was a good book uh, and it advanced to the semi-final. So many judges uh, didn't agree with me, but for me, it was the worst book of the group. The second book, number five, uh, might also be a, a surprise, although this book didn't advance to the semi-final and that is Kate Atkinson Transcription. If you're following me for any length of time, you know that I really adore uh, Kate Atkinson's work. Uh, I loved Life After Life. I really enjoy her uh, crime fiction, the Jackson Brody series. So when I read the book way before uh, I judged the prize, I was excited. But it didn't. The book didn't deliver for me. Um, we have our main character, Juliet Armstrong. Uh, the book is set in three time. Uh, periods first uh, during World War II in the 50s and then in the present day when Juliet is an old woman. Uh, it opens with Juliet being an old woman and then goes back in back flashes uh, telling us her story. Juliet was recruited during World War II by uh, the MI5, uh, the English uh, Secret Service, uh, spying on um, German left, uh, <laughs> left wing, yes, German right wing uh, supporters in England. Um, this story then goes on in the 50s and the, the part in the present day is, is quite short. It's more uh, that we see Juliet after everything and we learn what happened. Um, now, first of all, it the, the positive. It was fast paced. Um, it was you ha it had a bit this you know spy thriller atmosphere. The writing was really good. You can trust Kate Atkinson with that for sure. But I thought the there was a quite a cast of characters uh, uh, that were not very well developed. But okay, it's a big cast, so maybe that's forgivable. Um, but also the, the plot as such uh, was for me extremely um, uh, foreseeable, extremely uh, the plot twists and especially the final plot twists. If you have ever heard of the Cambridge Five, and I, I'm sure especially uh, English reader have, and I have too, I've read quite some books about that, you will know from the get-go what will happen. So the predictability uh, was a bit of a problem, I thought. Um, so in the end, it was not a bad, bad book. It, it was an easy read. It was a fast-paced read, but it was quite uh, forgettable in, in a way. So looking at my group of books, uh, I uh, came up with number five, unfortunately, for this book. Rank and ranking at number four is is uh, Ezi Edugian's Washington Black. Um, this is the story of the life story of uh, Washington Black um, in the early 19th century. It starts when Washington Black is 11 years old and he is a slave uh, on a sugar plantation. Um, he is then um, tasked as the man servant uh, to his new master. The old master just died. A new master comes in, um, and this one, uh, this new master, uh, is into uh, you know balloon developments, technical things like that. And Washington Black is tasked to help him to be his quote unquote assistant. I mean, he's a slave, so he has to do what he is told. Um, the story then uh, goes on 
uh, uh, because uh, Washington Black White literally with his master uh, flies away in a balloon and then we have all kinds of adventures uh, from the first aquarium to the Arctic. Um, uh, we have a love affair uh, when Washington Black is older. So it, it's a whole life story. Um, the book was really entertaining even though the subject is everything but entertaining, slavery. Um, uh, the, the, the character of Washington Black was well done, really well developed and the, the, the sort of, you know, kind of um, magical adventures almost. It, it, it was, yeah, it was an entertaining read for me. But um, in the end, it, it, I, I felt it was too fluffy, too, too, like, too much like, you know, cotton candy kind of thing. So I, I didn't think it was um, a book that really addressed the issues that it was dealing with, that it lacked a certain depth. Uh, and it was, in other words, just entertaining and not more than that. So that's the reason, even though with... As with the other two books I just mentioned, a lot of people disagreed with me and a lot of judges obviously disagreed with me because this book, Washington Black, did advance to the semi-finals. But for me, it was just number four of the group. Then on to the three books that I thought should advance. And if you have watched the video up to now, you will know that only one book of the three that I ranked in the first three actually did advance. Um, in number three is for, was for me, Michael Ondaatje, Warlight. Um, and that is the book that I was referring to earlier when I said liking a book or not liking a book and thinking it's a good book, mostly sort of, you know, overlap, but in this instance, they don't. And that has all to do with me and Michael Ondaatje. I just don't get on with his writing at all. Uh, Warlight is the story of Nathaniel, mainly, and his sister, uh, opening in 1945 in London, just after, you know, the war ends, um, uh, Nathaniel and his sister are abandoned by their mother and put into the care of a, a, a guardian referred to as the Moth, uh, who is kind of a shady figure, has shady uh, acquaintances. And then Nathaniel tells us the story of his life and what happened. Uh, also mostly going back when Nathaniel is older. We learn about uh, the true story of the mother, uh, why she abandoned the children, and we learn about the moth and, you know, the shady acquaintances. For me, as often happens with, unfortunately, with Michael Ondaatje, uh, uh, Ondaatje's book, it was just incredibly boring. Um, I started to read this book uh, when it was long listed for the Man Booker last year and I DNF'd it because it, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. So I picked it up again and read it uh, for the Booktube Prize. But it's just not for me. Michael Ondaatje is just not for me. But I could still see why people... Uh, other readers would enjoy the book and think it's a good book and that's why I decided to rank it number three. But obviously... Uh, other judges had also issues with this book because it didn't advance to the semi-finals. And then on to number two, another book that didn't make the semi-finals, but I thought it was really good, and that is Jamie Quattro's Fire Sermon. This is a book about a marriage, Maggie and Thomas. Uh, they live in Nashville with their two children, and Maggie is drawn into loving another man, uh, James, uh, who is a poet. Um, and Maggie tells us uh, the story of not only the marriage, but also the development of this affair, whether or not, you know, she should engage and what she should do um, uh, with this new lover. Um, the book is told not in a, a linear timeline, but going back and forth. So we learn bits and pieces about Maggie's youth and um, how she came to marry Thomas, uh, which was more of a, yeah, you know, Mar Maggie is very religious and she slept with, uh, with Thomas and then she had this feeling, mainly uh, fueled by her religious belief that she has to marry him. 
Um, Thomas is certainly not a bad person, but uh, the sex uh, is not good. Um, Maggie is repulsed uh, by having to sleep with Thomas. That's a big issue in the book, the uh, erotic side of a marriage or a relationship. Um, and I thought that this theme was really interesting. It was really well done, especially because the, the characters uh, were nuanced. I mean, I didn't like Thomas at all, but he was, in, a, in certain ways, he was a good husband, and more importantly, he was a really good father. And James, the poet, who was an exceptionally good lover, obviously, was quite a dick, <laughs> you know, and... It, 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 it told the story from Maggie's perspective, um, uh, revealing to me as a reader that it was more the idea of James uh, than the actual man she was attracted to. So I thought the, the, uh, the writing, by the way, was excellent in my uh, view. The, the, the back and forth really worked well. You know, that you slowly know more about the characters. I really like that. So I thought it, it was an, a, a really good book. Um, and I ranked it second. But like I said, others uh, d disagreed, obviously, because it didn't uh, make it to the semifinals. And coming in uh, at number one, you already know because it's the only book left of the six, is Akwekwe Imezi Freshwater. This is a debut novel um, by an author born in Nigeria but moving to the US and it's highly autobiographical. Um, there are some judges who uh, then ranked it really low because of the autobiographical nature, um, because the argument is then it's not a real quote-unquote novel. I don't think that that is a valid um, uh, argument at all. Um, a novel is a novel, whether it's based on the life of the author really doesn't matter. What matters is, is it well done? And I thought this was an excellent book. Um, the main character in the book is a, a Nigerian, a Nigerian born a girl, because we start with the birth called Ada. Um, and Ada is what we in Western culture would call has a split personality. But what is so interesting about the book is that the author takes a completely different approach to that, to this um, given. Um, Ada is, uh, in fact, inhabited by Igbo spirits. So there are multiple uh, spirits living within Ada. Um, a big part of the book is, uh, is, is told in we, so all the collective of all uh, the, the, the spirits inhabiting uh, this this person tell the story collectively. It's also uh, then sometimes told from the perspective of one of the spirits, um, and the it tells us the life of Ada from her Nigerian childhood um, into um, moving to the U.S. Uh, to college, uh, what happens there, and how um, the 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 person called the Ada <laughs> struggles with these various spirits inhabiting her body. Um, I thought this was completely original uh, and fresh and a unique take on the question, like I said, that we would in we in Western culture would say it's a split personality. Um, um, you don't have to believe uh, the, the spirit, uh, that the spirits, that there are spirits or that there is a spiritual world at all. And that a spirit inhabited Ada, but even if you don't, and I don't, it gives you a completely different outlook on this, um, this person and the, the, the fact how we in Western culture frame, uh, certain things as mental illness. And it gives you a different way of looking at it. Uh, the writing was excellent, certainly for a debut. I was just blown away for uh, by the book, and so I ranked it number one, and I'm really happy that out of the three books that I ranked top three, this one made it to the semi-finals. So these were my rankings for the quarterfinals of the Booktube Prize. I really enjoyed doing it, and I'm also a judge in the semi-finals, and I will talk about that when that is over. I think in 
July is the deadline. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. If you read any of the books, let me know what you thought of them down below. If you read all six of them, tell me your ranking and I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.